Hello everyone and welcome back to my Minecraft world. It's another beautifully polygonal day as you can see. Whoops, let me go the other way. Oh, it's bright and sunny out. Anyways, I'm up here today because I was between projects trying to figure out what I was going to do next. Uh oh, what's going on over there? Oh, okay, I'm looking the wrong way. Ha ha ha. This, as you can see, is my home base island. I have just wrapped up the, way off in the distance, my mob drop. And then I got to thinking, oh, okay, I got to go do that snowman. But I promised myself I wouldn't do it until it snowed. And it hasn't snowed here yet. So back burner for that project. Uh, in the meantime, however, I've uh, come back to the base here and done a couple things. While I was over there collecting wool, every now and again I would transport back a citizen. So in that little hut right there is two farmers and one scientist. And I think you might know what that's all about. If you don't, I'll explain it to you in just a moment. As you can see, I still have my grid lines for the area around my map that I thought was my spawn chunk. This right here, where my X is, is where the compass points to. And that is the calculated spot using a method I found on YouTube. But uh, in either event, there's a double-checking methodology where you throw objects out there and then hop into the nether boop, 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 for five minutes. I went in there for upwards of seven or eight, sometimes 10 to 12. And what you come out, and ideally, because your spawn chunk is still here, the whole time you're in the nether, all the items on your spawn chunk will still be there, but things that... Wait, no. The other way around. Because your spawn chunk is there. Yeah, that's who it would be. Yeah, well, since your spawn chunk is there, the objects will disappear. Oh, the sun's going down already? The objects will disappear, and the objects that uh, were in the unloaded sections of the map will still be there. But I can't seem to find it. It should be somewhere around this little 96 point. That's the 96 point. But I just can't seem to get it to work. But anyways, it looks like it's going to form a nice big grid eventually. This is a glass block at the level of the sea water, so I can walk on water. But uh, let me talk about that as soon as I get down there and talk about what the next project is. All right. Oh, boy. I hope I don't hit that bridge. Oh. Gray Glue Guinness ain't nothing. Okay, so before I jump into my bed here and take a nap to turn it back to day so I can get back to talking about the next project, I figured I'd point this out to you. As you can see, I've converted this back into wheat. I haven't done anything with it in some time. I'll wait for this one to go before I do it. But uh, I'm not going to be doing much with this after this. I don't know if I won't just recreate it or just leave it because now that I've got the mob drop going over there, I will have plenty of bones to make a automated, semi-automated uh, wheat farm. So that is a new project, the semi-automated wheat farm. I'll print that up on the screen so I'll remember to do it myself. <laughs> but that's one of the projects. I came down here. One of the villagers over that away will trade me for raw chicken, which I thought was odd. And as you can see, my farm isn't necessarily working the right way right now anyways. So let me... Go ahead and turn it off for now and see those guys. You know what? I don't need eggs, so let me pulse it see if I got anybody. No. All right, so I don't need eggs, but I'll leave this on. I have plenty of eggs over here. No, where are they? Here. So, huh. You know what? Maybe I will. I'll, I'll let it back up with uh, chicken eggs and uh, make a bunch of chickens and kill them and go trade with that butcher I saw. Anyways, why am I here? Oh, yeah. Over here, speaking of things that need adjusting, you might recall I came in here and loaded this thing up with about uh, 32 or so or so uh, cows. But they all, they all died before previously and were left in a state like this where there's only about three or four of them. And I thought I cleared up that gap where the thing was to make it happen, but apparently they decided to die again anyways. So... The reason I have them set up like this is because it was a simple roundabout one. I wanted to eventually put in automation so that I could uh, like uh, jam a penny into my left control button and set that to be my left click. Whoops. <laughs> but um, without anything in my hand, right? And then um, use that for automated wheat collection or cow uh, generation, excuse me. And the cows would drop down here. 
and they would flow down over this way flow and then drop into this little guy where I could at my leisure vanquish them with a rusty crusty and get the leather and the meat and get myself some food and make some books so I could enchant well I've done a little bit of that but I haven't gone hardcore eventually if I want this to be a hardcore setup I'm gonna need some sort of experience farm right nearby preferably so since I haven't been able to find a mob uh, spawner in order to create a mob killer that way, I'm considering converting this section into a very compact cow farm, which I could do with redstone and some water and some lava, and uh, do it that way. But I'm concerned I'll run into the same problem. Like, I don't know why those guys up there are dying. Anyways, I would think was thinking about converting that, and then possibly putting a portal here so I can go in and create a, oh, I hesitate to say it, but to create a, um, a zombie pigment farm, which can generate a lot of experience very quickly, but at the same time makes it more difficult to travel through the nether. So I'm kind of thinking about doing some more research on that before going forward, determining whether or not I can create a, a zombie pig farm some distance away so that it won't aggravate the one's immediately into the area if that makes sense like if this one i walked in if i were to create a portal walk in start a fight with a pig and be cool once i came out here and went to my main portal over on the uh over on the uh what's the word i'm looking for <laughs> on the edge of my island then that would be cool that would work out fine we'll see and this is a block that leads up to water and there's a stone pillar up there which i might actually discuss here in a second okay so let me hop into the bid and make it daytime again so I can tell you about what I want to work on next. All right, good morning and welcome back to another beautifully polygonal day here on my Minecraft server. I've already talked about a couple things. Uh, I forgot what they were. <laughs> but uh, weed automation, uh, I didn't talk about this. The reason I'm on this island again is because the next project I wanted to do for creative reasons was the automatic semi lossless bamboo farm semi lossless quotes anywho's in order to do that i got to thinking about how much um iron i'll need and i don't have nearly that much and as much as i want to go down i don't mind going down and digging around and there's a nice cavern down there for me to dig around in way off in the distance some f degrees further i would rather go ahead and get started on an iron farm i've been putting it off for a long 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 time so an iron farm is one of the things I think I need to do. And in order to do that, I need those villagers that are in that box that we talked about. Now, I thought about... Here's that pillar from downstairs. I thought about creating a zombie spawner... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. A villager. If I said zombie before, you know what I mean now. A villager, breeder, slash, you know, trade network, and deploy them up and through water chutes out to the, to the mine... Mine farms? Is that what I was saying? Iron farms. <laughs> That's the word. Uh, iron farms. But I don't know. I don't think that works. That's a lot of traveling around. If I put it over there, that was the other idea. Put it here. Oh, the reason I thought it might look good here is because I could encase it in glass and put it up to the level and it would be an attraction. An attraction to the island. And I thought about doing the same thing over here, possibly. This is 5, was it 5, 10, 11... It would be very, very tight, but doable in this section as well. Like drop it down and make a little bridge that goes over to here and make it observational. Okay, so like not a flat bridge like this one, but a rounded little, like uh, I'm thinking Japanese culture looking bridge. Um, kind of in that line. We'll see. And to that end... <laughs> I brought a bunch of uh, birch trees over here and started growing birch. So I'm, I've got a little birch growing in case I want to do that. I'm also growing the birch for the bamboo project. So all of these thoughts coming together. Um, another place I considered for the breeder is over there on that island off the back end for spacing requirements. Now let's talk about spacing. In order for an iron mine to work... An iron mine essentially runs around the physics of the village. So you would need an actual village. This is not a village just having three villagers here. But a village can be created with one villager 
a light source, and six doors, right? I think a light source is required. That's what I use. I always use one. Better safe and sorry, you know, rather than have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Anyways, a villager <laughs> and six doors makes a village. So within the center of that village, I don't know about the one by six kind of setup, which I guess is actually going to be three by five when I'm all said and done with it. <clears throat> I'm not exactly sure what the minimum dimensions of a village are. So would uh, the reason I started here is because I didn't start here. I got here, but I did start here <laughs> at the beginning of the video. Anyways, all comes full circle, if you will. So the reason I started digging here is to get a look at what it would look like as an imprint on the island and I didn't see the good look so I climbed up there so I could see this and take a good look around and see how things are going anyways this would be where I would put it if I stuck it here this is the size it would take the glass that you saw out there is essentially 100 squares away this square goes about 90 away from here it was it here no 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 from there so this is probably closer to 64 away. Anyways, irrelevant. And out that way, 100. These pipes, since they already exist, would make it easier to transport uh, citizenry to the work mill, to the iron mines with them. But I also thought if I built in a containment unit for trades, I could pick the guys I liked a lot and use them. And as soon as they wouldn't replenish their trades, and I don't know if villagers ever replenish their trades but i'm running into issues at my other place i'm going to go over there in afk for a couple days and see if they do but so far none of them have been willing to trade with me once i've uh, successfully gotten all of their emeralds and as you know the emeralds are required for yet another project that is long term so this is the area it would take for the breeder and probably an extra 20 squares by four to make like an area where I could drop them in maybe multi-levels of uh, villager trading. So they would they would breed in, they'd come out, hit a water elevator and drop down, water streams over, and then another water elevator to come out and then recycle into the system. Or a bypass over here that doesn't even let them drop down into the trade exchange office or whatever you would call it. Okay, so these are all things that you can conceptualize. So the big question is, which one am I going to do? This one I think would be easier. Eventually I could link it up over there. I could also, if you'll excuse me a second, I could also build in a passageway to keep this completely hidden. There needs to be some light in there. I'm not sure if it can be underground or not, but if it can be underground, I've already made plans that this could go down far enough that I could recover it and kind of give it some texture. You might know that this hill used to come up about three or four extra blocks anyways. I've just leveled it all at the very beginning of the game for building dirt. Anywho's, over here, folks could walk through the portal either way and come out and walk down and go out the path that I've constructed. Or I could dig a tunnel hole, maybe put a half slab here uh, so that people don't necessarily see it. And Half slab, half slab. So that could be there, and you could walk into that through a secret little area down here or coming back from the place if you wanted to go check it out all types of things like that and I was thinking if I built my mines my mines iron mines one here and one a hundred squares up and one a hundred squares over which would actually be further than this but a hundred squares that way should be far enough away from there and if I do a hundred squares that way you can actually kind of see the mob spawner over there a little bit in the corner so you could put one there and then the one that would be over here would actually be close enough that you could see the what's the guys the underground temple the underwater temple that could be fun to explore too but I'm still putting that off until I don't know why I'm just kind of am so not I'm not, it's not a priority for me I don't know how much I want glowstones and other things I kind of like my decorating materials right now I'm a big fan of uh, wood and sand so this was a nice spawn for me. Anyways, those are my choices. This guy, close by, easier to transport, 
It's a nice geographic center to go, okay, 100 that way, build one, 100 that way, build one, 100 that way, build one. And I guess this is almost 100 square, but it's going to be a little bit more. But yeah. And then I'd have one, two, three, four, five times two because they're double layered eventually. Ten of them. And I guess uh, each one would generate an iron golem once every six or seven minutes or so. So I'll call it seven minutes, ten of them. So more frequently than one a minute. And uh, that'd be 60 an hour. Not bad. I like that. So I could go to sleep for a couple days. Well, I could, but I could go AFK, sleep, go to work, whatever. And they'd be running, running, running. Oh, and to make sure that they're running, you have to be more than... Wait, that's slime farms I'm thinking about. Uh, but to make sure everything spawned in while I'm watching them, I would build a platform 50 squares out, 50 squares up, yeah? And uh, just put a portal on that just so it's an observation deck so I can see all five of them at, at work at the same time. I say five, but I mean ten. And, uh, yeah, link it up with that one. And also create another portal over there. I'm getting really comfortable with portals now. So create another one over there, and that over there will be the formal collection area of all the iron. That's why I went ahead and started with this glass walkway on water, because I thought for sure that that's what it's going to end up being. I'm going to build a deck over there. It won't be all glass. Once you're over there, it'll be nice and sturdy. <laughs> but it'll be a nice deck, and I'll have a collection system uh, with the iron I do have. I won't need it to be huge, because I can just like make one column down to actually I could probably just storm in hoppers for a while for a long long while but um, yeah I could uh, create the collection system without putting in the hoppers because I could use just one hopper into a multiple chests or into a double wide chest I mean to say for a long long time because that's a lot of slots and then the hopper itself fills up so I could do that build the collection build a murder death system which would be just water flowing in the lava because they're so high gotta hurry this up and have um, start water canals off to each side so everyone flows to the main center from here over to there to here and then actually construct this first one and I know that sounds kind of silly but uh, what I think I'll do actually is do at least one flow path in from each side so then I could use those as the determining factor of how far away I actually make it you'll see what I'm talking about when I get to it but to do that I gotta do this first so let's make a decision should I build my villager breeder slash trading post spawner thing here? Or should I build it over in the water section where the pillar is kind of standing up and surround it in glass to make it a observational event off the side? And I could bring them up out of the water or through like a, a quick stair tunnel up to here. I can figure something out to get them moved over to there. You know, it would be a little bit harder, but it's not that much harder to move them that far when you consider how many freaking water channels I'm willing to make. So should I put it here? Or should I tight fit, squeeze it in here? It would have to be, this would have to be a little bit different because of how tight it is. It would have to be villager breeder, and trader thing over here. This might be the most intriguing one. On the other hand, my path, let's see, goes here. So my tunnel down goes over this way. It might run into it, so it, but it might not. So it could also be like you could see it on my stairs down into my mining tunnel or here. That makes sense? I think it does. And the reason of this one is because of the rounded bridge over the top, which I might still do, and then just turn this into water. So make that another choice. So you can put it over there in the hole, voting, pictures. Click here to put it in the hole. Click here to put it in the water. Yeah. Click here to put it right here. And click here again <laughs> to not put it here but to put a bridge there and put uh, a waterway flowing underneath. Or maybe entrap some of these guys so it's like a koi pond or something. That might be kind of cool too. All right, so give me some feedback. I know, ooh, 
could I get one of those guys to follow me all the way over here? That would be an interesting koi fond. All right, so that's what we're voting on. Guys, go ahead and vote on that. Let me know what I should do. I will uh, essentially be trading with those villagers and experimenting with those guys in the de meantime. And uh, when you get back to me, get back to me. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep cleaning up the place, chopping down trees, getting supplies on the meantime. Thank you very much for watching. I hope to hear from you soon. Until next time, have a great day.